It's really often when we're running electrical circuits, we have to connect one wire to another wire. There's a specific process we're going to do, and we have to do this right. So we're going to do the beginning step that we would do on a wire to terminal connection, which is stripping the end of the wire of insulation, but we're going to leave more bare wire exposed than our wire to terminal connection. As you can see here, I've stripped about an inch. You can go even more, but that should be enough you don't want too little wire exposed. And when we go through the process, you'll kind of see why. At the end of this, we're gonna clip these anyway to the right length that we want, but we want enough wire to twist the two conductors together. I'm going to connect these two black wires uh, in a wire-to-wire -wire splice. So the first thing you're going to do is you wanna hold them together as closely as you can get them. And we need them the same length. You don't want one longer than the other one. And here's where I'm looking. My critical point here is that I want my insulation to be lined up. If I have one wire sticking out a little further, that's not really a problem. But when we get done, we want this insulation to be lined up. We're going to use our lineman's pliers. This is the critical tool to use to, for a wire-to-wire -wire connection. We're going to grab the ends of these wires with our lineman's pliers, and we're going to twist them and we want them twisting around each other evenly. If you see one wire staying still and the other one winding around it, then that's not ideal. So I've got a nice even wrap going on these wires and I'm just gonna continue it until they get tighter. And there's four or five times and they're getting to where they're not gonna to twist together anymore. As you see here, I've got a, uh, a funny sort of uneven end on these wires. That's not a problem, we're gonna clip it off. The question is how long or where should I clip it? And the answer to that falls on our next piece that we're putting on, which is our wire nut. And the, the rule here is you don't want any bar, bare wires sticking out of your wire nut. Those should not be exposed. So once that wire nut is tightened on there, all you see is the insulation and the wire nut. The other thing that I forgot to mention is about the direction of the twisting when we're twisting these wires. If you notice while I'm twisting it, I'm twisting it in a motion that is clockwise to the end of the wire. So if I was to turn this wire towards you and sort of mimic that motion, it's gonna be in this direction that I'm twisting those wires. That's the way a wire nut is built. And a wire nut is not unlike a nut or a bolt, and when you twist it on, it has to go in that same clockwise motion. What this is going to do is actually increase the clamping or uh, increase the twisting force that the wires have already started. So I'll go ahead with my lineman's pliers and I have my cutting feature on these. I'm gonna go ahead, and this is gonna be a little funky looking, but I'm going to clip these wires here. This is going to allow me to put my wire nut on properly. I have a nice, sharp, we'll call it a sharp end and nothing in the way. So I put my wire nut on and I can just start twisting it. It's going to wind on as if it's threaded. There are actually uh, some features inside of this wire nut that are very similar to threads. And I'll know that it's working because I see my uh, insulated conductors now twisting together. You really can't go too tight with this. You go to a point to where I've got a tight wrap of my insulated conductor ends. And now I have, you can give it a tug, but that is basically a wire-to-wire -wire splice with a wire nut. One other thing to talk about is the size of your wire nuts. These wire nuts are rated, and I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off, and you can see it's wound very tightly. What I have here is a smaller wire nut. This wire nut is rated to go on to two 14-gauge wires and it will work fine. What I'm doing here is I can save myself some space in my junction box by using a smaller wire nut. It's not often that you need to save that space, but it could be a consideration if you have a lot of conductors, a lot of connections that you have to make in your junction box. It's often when we're doing wire-to-wire -wire splices, we have more than two conductors that we have to twist together. You're gonna to see this happen when you do pigtails. That's a very frequent thing that we're doing. If you wanna learn more about pigtails, go back in the lessons and look at that specific one. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna put three 
neutral wires together. I've got three 14 gauge wires. We're, the process is going to go the same as two wires, except we're adding an extra conductor. I'm gonna use my Lyman's pliers. I'm holding them very closely together. We're going to start giving them a twist and we're grabbing the ends really tight and we're twisting them and they're winding together very tightly. I know I'm done when I get to where my conductor's uh, insulation on my conductors is starting to wrap together. At this point, we're going to take our cutters on our Lyman's pliers, clip the end clean, and now we can go on with our wire nut. So the wire nut goes on the same. Remember, our wires are twisting in a clockwise motion, and also our wire nut goes on in a clockwise motion. That's going to increase the clamping power. And when I see those, uh, those insulated uh, wraps on those conductors winding together, I know I'm as tight as I can be. As you're finished with this connection, you can give the wire nut a tug, pull on the wires, make sure that everything's connected, fastened well together. That is a multi-wire connection.